Oli Pope, England's number three for this tour. Oli, firstly, historic tour. Is there a feeling or, or something in, in the England camp as well in terms of, of the immenseness of the tour? Yeah, definitely. Um, I think, firstly, every, everyone's so excited to be here uh, in Pakistan. I think it's obviously been such a long time since we've torn, uh, toured here. Um, but I think the main thing for us is we know how much joy cricket brings to the people of Pakistan. And we're very happy to be able to provide entertainment. And uh, hopefully we're making a lot of people happy by being here. But also, we're also excited to see the crowds. And uh, we know what a historic game and series this will be. The challenge for you was the promotion to number three. But that has suited you perfectly, hasn't it? Yeah, I've really enjoyed this, this move, I think. Being a batter and coming in and batting at number six is an interesting place to be. It's a good place to find your feet and get some experience, but at the same time, I think batting at number three, you've got a chance to dictate how the how the innings goes. Um, if you hit, hit a big score, then you know that can dictate how everyone else plays behind you rather than at number six. Sometimes you're almost playing the situation a little bit. So I've enjoyed the responsibility and hopefully I can keep keep scoring runs there and making it my own. You said responsibility and, and responsibility put on you in this McCullum and Stokes era. How has McCullum in particular helped your game? He's been amazing. Um, I think he's changed our outlook to test cricket. I think we, we now go into a test week excited and we want to have a lot of fun and we want to entertain the people rather than almost feeling like you're almost playing for your spot sometimes, which in the past, I think for a lot of us young guys, especially it felt like, uh, feels like our team now and he's made a more relaxed environment. And obviously the style of cricket we want to play, we want to entertain, we want to be positive. We want to hit some sixes and fours, but also if we need to sort of uh, calm it down a little bit and block out a little bit just while we have to, then, then we'll do that too. But no, it's been, it's simplified, simplified the game a little bit for me and I've really enjoyed it. Yeah, nobody wants to see you calming down. You want want the same way. But in terms of your development, there's, uh, in an earlier part of your career, you were sort of known as a very innovative T20 player and then sort of the transition to test cricket. How difficult a process was that? Yeah, I think uh, naturally I came in to play for Surrey in T20s before I played in Red Bull cricket. Um, but I always thought I had a good solid game that just happened to come before the, the Red Bull stuff. And I guess now my Red Bull cricket sort of Gone, gone quicker than my white ball and hopefully one day they'll level out a little bit. Um, but uh, I think as long as you've got your solid foundations, you look at the best players in the world, the guys like Joe Root, Kohli, Baba, those guys have solid defences, solid drives, and then they can almost create shots around that and find ways of scoring quickly in white ball cricket, especially around that. So I think, yeah, obviously the most important thing is having good foundations and then some natural skill and natural variation will help you be successful and hit the ball over the keeper's head and in weird places. So I enjoy that too. Yeah, you talked about the technique issue here. Um, very few players are able to to make big changes in their technique. You didn't have a, a great start to test cricket and then you've, you've sort of worked on technical issues. Um, can you define one or two of those or how you went about changing yourself in that way? Yeah, I think for me, I think I probably learned my lessons the hard way in the ashes. Um, I think I, I had a tough Ashes series. I played three games, didn't score many runs. Um, and I realised sort of the, when your anxiety levels go up and you're, you're sort of on, not, not on edge, but almost too excited for it, you, you, your movements slightly change. So I was, my trigger was going too far across. My hands are in a place where I didn't think my hands were. Um, so I worked hard at trying to make everything a little bit simpler. So make, make my movements smaller and very repeatable. So that whatever, if I'm playing a club game, if I'm playing for Surrey or England on the biggest stage possible, then everything's going to be nice and tight and everything's going to be repeatable. So that's my main, uh, main adjustment I've made. So that that's allowed me to get to know my game inside out and has helped me this summer and hopefully it will help me for, for the next year, this winter and hopefully into an Ashes summer as well. So the people who don't know, they sort of say that Oli Pope is basically Ian Bell again. Is that just a coincidence or, or did you actually um, model yourself or look up to him at any stage? I think it's a bit of a coincidence. I think naturally I watched a lot of Ian Bell when I was a young player and everyone thought he, was a, he had a good technique. He was, an, he was obviously an amazing player. He's got an amazing record. Um, but at the same time, I think I probably listened for the start of my career to too many voices about that. And I thought 
there was comparisons with Joe Root, Ian Bell, and those guys are legends of the game. And I didn't get too far ahead of myself, but I realised I'm on my own journey. Um, and then those guys had brilliant techniques. So if there's small small pointers, I can pick up from them. But I've got to I've got to be Ollie Pope, not Ian Bell. But if I can have a career like him, hopefully I look back and I will. Um, but for now, I need to focus on being Ollie Pope. Yeah. Yeah, Ollie Pope is the focus. Yeah. Um, Short leg, close and fielder, absolutely brilliant. You talked about not getting too excited, but once you're in the thick of the game all the time, you have to get excited. <laughs> yeah, a short leg is a, is a position where you can, it, it can be a scary position because if the bowler bowls a bad a ball position. and they smack it straight at you, it's going to hurt. Um, but at the same time, especially places like Pakistan, if spin comes into the game more, it's going to be very important. Um, so you've got to try and create chances in there. You've got to be quick on your feet, agile, and almost try and read the batter's mind a bit and create a chance out of nothing. So it's, it's a good, good position when the ball's spinning. Uh, you feel like you're in the game and you can change the game in there. So yeah, it's good fun. But how, how extra sort of fielding you do particularly for that spot you do extra miles for it every day or not or? every day uh normally two days out from the test match so today i did some practice tomorrow i'll do a bit of practice but in general the most important important thing there is trying to be as relaxed as you can um because it's because you're so close to the batter it's easy to be tense and you don't want to be tense because the ball could just pop out of your hands um so it's being relaxed and confident and just trying to be as busy as you can and try and create a chance so it's not always you don't have to catch hundreds of balls there i, th I don't think i think it's yeah more about just staying calm and relaxed but then also quick and agile and also help us if you're friends with the bowler if you fought with them then yeah. it's, it's a problem and it? sometimes <laughs> sometimes the batter as well to be honest <laughs> um are you a man who, who looks at targets, who sets himself targets before each series or, or does he look at numbers, does Oli Pope look at numbers? I think in the past probably too much. Um, I think especially sometimes playing in England, sometimes averaging 30 might be good in a series uh, because the pitchers might be doing a lot or sometimes averaging 50 in a series that might be good. Um, so I've, I try not to look at numbers too much and then after a series I can review and I'll look back and I'll give myself an honest evaluation and I'll go if I've averaged 40, I've had a pretty good series. If, I've, if it's less than 30, then I, I know I've probably not performed as well as I should have. So I try not to set myself too many targets, but I know what works for me and pr numbers probably not wearing too much before a series because that's just almost added pressure on me. I know the pressures that come with a test match and uh, I'll give myself an honest evaluation after. Um, subcontinent, you haven't had a lot of experience. Obviously, Pakistan hasn't hosted England for such a long time, but in terms of, of your own batting, do you do you look at the subcontinent and think that I'm, I have to sort of do something differently with the way I approach, approach my innings? Um, I th not necessarily with the seamers the whole time. I think they might be slightly slower pitches at times, um, and obviously pit the pitches might spin a little bit more at times as well. Um, so I think you've got to be adaptable. Uh, we'll train. We obviously do a lot of work against spin while we're here because we're likely to face more of that than we do back home anyway. Um, but I think the tech, my technique's fairly solid. I like to think um, so. That that game, I like to think it can take me. I can play that in England, South Africa, or Pakistan now. So um, with slightly adjustments as well. So maybe it might reverse. So you might want to stand slightly leg side of the ball if it's doing that, for example. Um, so. I think it's being adaptable and quick quick on your feet as well. So I think that's the important thing. We've got a chef traveling with, with the team. What does Oli Pope normally ask him to make? Uh, I, <laughs> I'm pretty relaxed. The food's been amazing, to be honest. Um, anything really, chicken, pasta, uh, the food so far has been really good. So uh, I, I normally get what I'm given here. Um, and then if, if there's nothing I like, then I'll say, but I always like what's on offer. Lovely, have a great Tuesday. Thank you. Thank you, cheers.